Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another video of this playlist Uber Eats clone. And uh, now I'm not going to extend this Uber Eats clone app uh, for next month. I'm trying to finish as much as we can. I mean, the whole uh, front and back end, I'm targeting to finish it because we can't keep talking for, about this forever, right? So I, we already have some kind of a UI. After this video, we will work on the UI and we will do the API integration of authentication, fetching the restaurant list and then fetching the restaurant details and uh, populating the data in the Redux state at the React front-end app, okay? Now, uh, we need to build two more primary services and those services are first service is the card service and then another is the order service. That's the focus of this video and this video is going to be a little lengthy so get be ready for that. So card service and we have another is the order service. So card service, we have these many tables still now, like we have a user, we have a dish, we have a restaurant. So these belongs to two different services, auth service, right? And the restaurant service. In auth service, I will be adding a couple of more endpoints where you can reset password, forget passwords and all, because those APIs are not there. I just created a bare bone auth service Restaurant service is fully functional. It has everything uh, in uh, I just did some changes What I did is at, at the restaurant dish. I introduced some enums Where I can show you in the restaurant this DTO These are some of the enums which will define the dish type Okay, what is the meal type cuisine type and the food type based on th those also you can actually filter and the search on the elastic search Okay, so we are mo uh, almost done with these two services. Now we are going to talk about the card service. Let's say when user select couple of uh, dish menu items from the restaurant, then uh, we need to store that in the card service. Because card service is intermediate representation of what a user may or may not order, right? So in the card service, we need the reference of the user who is ordering the, who is putting the items inside a card and from which restaurant the user is putting the items in the cart. So this is the cart service. So it will have a user ID and the restaurant ID and the food menu items ID. Because in cart, uh, let's say in the cart you have 10 items. Which you just placed. Maybe you will order them sometimes later. So inside a uh, cart service we need to store them. So whenever user comes back he should see all the 10 items are available in the cart. So we need a, I mean just I'm trying to put some schema here. User ID, restaurant ID and you can say dish menu ID. And here what we are doing is we want to have a decouple services. So they do not call each other. I mean there are different ways of uh, designing these services currently. Let's say if you build a cart service, right? And if you start calling the restaurant service to fetch the whole restaurant menu inside a card service, then it's like a, you are coupling the services. What I'm going to do, do, do is when you are adding items, removing items or updating items, um, you, the front end needs to pass the, the menu item object. So dish menu ID, I will be storing and then dish menu. This will be a JSON object, which front end will provide this API is okay. This is the user ID, this is the restaurant ID, and this is the dish menu ID. And this is my JSON object which I want to order. Okay, which contains, okay, what is your dish name, what is the cuisine type, meal type, what is the price, and all the availability and all those fields. That I'm going to store inside a cart table. So similarly here, we will have a rep multiple records for your cart. Okay, let's say the user is adding, has added 10 items, right? So this is like a first item. Then this is your second item. And this is your third item. Right? This is what your cart uh, object will contain. And then what you can do is inside a cart, you might be doing update, delete, create, adding a new items into inside the cart removing or updating uh, items from the cart. All these operations we can perform on the cart service. You can also do uh, 
first of all like when you go to the landing page on the ui you will see okay is there anything inside my cart already created so you'll fetch all the items for the current logged in user for the restaurant id because uh, i will just fetch all my cart items for my user id because your order can be from different restaurant and different restaurant ids may be there then you may decide to update delete or maybe you decide to clear all my cards so then i will just delete all those records card service is only a temporary representation of what you are going to order right so it's just like a temporary data we are going to store inside a table now this is my card service okay that has simply maybe the crud operation we just need to manage the authorization and authentication on this service but we are not going to validate okay we are not going to call the restaurant service to validate okay this is the restaurant id user is passing the correct correct restaurant id we will just check okay there is a user calling the card service has a valid jwt token has its own user id has a guest user role because it's like a end user not a restaurant admin and all he is just a normal end user using the the front end client to order the food menu items he is a user has a user id and email so we are we got the user id and he will pass the restaurant id and the dish menu id which he sees on the ui after going into the restaurant page he will see all the menu items ordered by restaurant and then he will say click on plus items and here you will also have a count like uh, how many items you are ordering there may be a possible possibility that you are ordering multiple items of a same dish menu and then price per items all these will be inside this json based on that we will calculate how much you need to pay right so uh, we will just do a shell of a clone of this dish menu json object and we will be just putting the count there are many different ways to orchestrate it Currently, we just do a shallow clone. Otherwise, what we can do is when you are adding the items to the cart, we can make it little asynchronous, or on the fly, we can call the restaurant service, validate the restaurant ID, dish menu ID, and copy that data in the dish menu JSON object. But then you are doing a coupling, and when you update a restaurant dish menu items, things will be, we need to change everywhere, right? Here we are just storing the references to decouple the services and some of the data which is not being changed because once you added something inside a cart while you put an order then you can say okay this item is not available now or on the fly we have to check when you are just displaying this data on the UI okay particular dish menu item is still available at this particular duration those we can do the checks and we can validate. So either you do the validation on the back end or on the front end. Okay, we will do some validations with the restaurant services. That's that uh, we, we we have to do it because we cannot just uh, we rely on this JSON object. Now, our next service we are going to build is the order service. Then we have a pricing service, payment service, but the order service is another important part. What do we do in the order service? So let's say these are the card service menu items which you have now you decided okay these are my final items and i'm going to place an order right so inside the order service we are going to have all these different fields whatever we see in the card so in the order service the order id and all so let's say this is going to have a user id who is going to place the order right restaurant id and the menu items which you are going to place so here it can be it's also a json object and then order status has it been placed cancelled or uh, in progress or whatever we will define the enum for it the order status may be cancelled ordered and delivered all these can be enum status so user id Currently, we can make it simplified like, okay, uh, you can place an order from a single restaurant, not like mix of uh, restaurants and then you are placing an order because then we need to understand the logic of the delivery partner collecting the items from the multiple restaurants, okay? It's a single restaurant with the user ID and uh, menu item JSON. 
and price total and all those things uh, so there can be billing service but this is your order id restaurant id menu item json order status so it will have a summary of what all items you have ordered from this restaurant with this user id and in this offer operations will be on the order is okay i want to i have placed an order and what all i can do is get order by id i can just see the whole the detail of the order okay these are all the menu items from this restaurant and at the front end because the front end is showing the data based on the restaurant id on the front end we will fetch all the restaurant details okay this is the restaurant basic information name address and all menu items json we already have uh, or you can also store a menu item ids with the help of this we will store okay these are your menu items and this is the count and all and then status so all the operations is like update order you wanted to update an order uh, maybe once you place an order you cannot update but uh, you can actually cancel the order get order by id and get all orders based on this restaurant and you can also get all the history so all the operations like get all my orders so that will be the history because we can you can see all the orders which you have placed till now get order by id so most probably like you can you can put multiple orders that's fine you can create a three four orders and all orders can be active at a moment and when you fetch it you we will give you the order history and when you click on particular order you will fetch the current order by id and then get all my orders from a restaurant from restaurant maybe you are interested in just knowing okay what all orders i have placed from this restaurant in my one month and all update order that will be like you wanted to update order and maybe update comment maybe you wanted to add some comment on your order right like let's say some delivery instructions and all so this is your order service there will be an order id and everything will everything will move around an order because once the order is created you have an order id and then the payment will also belongs to the order id uh, all the order details you will get by order id like the, the the amount you need to pay and all those things then there will be a payment service let's talk about three services and then we will work on them payment service right so payment service will have okay when you want to add a payment get payment by id get payment by order id and validate payment right so payment i am thinking to integrate with the stripe let's see how it goes i mean uh, we can just integrate with other uh, providers which are available in india like pu and all but i think stripe integration is easy with the node.js nest.js so payment service here customer can pay for their orders so we will have an order id order id already knows okay what is the price total okay once the order is placed you cannot change the the total you, we need, you need to pay because before placing the order you will also apply the promos and all right that is just like a promo service can be a simple service if you want to build because what promo service does is when you because you might get a promo code from somewhere and then it will call the external services to validate okay if this promo code is valid or you just expose some promo codes out in the public and you give a discount and promo code will give discounts before you place an order right because you see these are the order menu items you will add the promo code and then you will send a promo code to this that will just validate okay your promo code is valid and it will just apply the discount on your bill so you will send your order id because order has not created you just have your front end app which has this order json and you will apply the promo and then the payment service promo or billing services may be a common service payment service here you will do the add payment payment means uh, we just do with the stripe so here it is you will have the couple of methods like get payment for the order id get payment by id add payment and if you just see what all we are going to see inside the payment 
like what are the the modal and entities so here the payment id and order id because payment belongs to the order that is important part here we don't need to reference anything else we just payment needs to know the order id okay we apply any coupon code that we can do and payment status or just simply a status because payment is already a table name and uh, amount right amount which you have paid for this so order id payment status and all and then uh, payment service yeah payment service will be a simple you will be just fetching the data okay once the payment is done through the stripe we will just update a record in the payment service that for this order id the payment status is uh, amount paid or done and you just apply this coupon code so like let's say if you are paying through the stripe i'm giving you 20 percent discount right so order id and all and then there will be a delivery service so all these will be asynchronous invocation because once the payment is made payment successful that means the order has been successfully placed right once the order has been successfully placed that means you need to attach a delivery partner for that right so payment service and then this is a delivery service and these are these will be the asynchronous hook because payment successful there will be an event that event will tell delivery service okay attach a delivery partner id with this order id because everything moves around an order id so here we'll have an id id uh, delivery partner id and then user id order id and then delivery time and there are more attributes you can add delivery time and then delivery partner id and uh, you can fetch the information of delivery partner id on the ui this is like an end user having some delivery partner profile this is going to be a separate role like restaurant that means similarly delivery partner will be another role and this user will be limited to access only the data which he needs once the because this is automatic system will assign a delivery partner based on the geolocation in the real world this is how it works and then delivery partner will get okay this is the order id he will get the maybe some order details payment status and the delivery uh, partner he already assigned so he will get the coordinate the address and all the whole because there is an order id he has from the order id he can get lots of things he can get okay what are the menu items menu items are not really we need to expose but at least the the delivery address right so here is the order service in order we need to maintain the address also for well, address we can get from the user id because this is the the delivery we need to make right to this user so this user will have the address because user can have multiple address that is also the thing but here we have only single address associated and when you end user is ordering a food he needs to update his profile and populate the addresses so we need to have one more table here so this is the user when it comes to the restaurant admins and all we don't need to manage the addresses but you see in the uber eats you can manage the multiple addresses so here you will have a multiple addresses and then that address id will moves around with order service also cards uh, so let's say you are placing an order right when you select an order all the menu items and then you select an address also to this address you want to uh, place an order so there will be an order id also will be attached to this order service so a lot of, lots of things moving uh, here and there but we need to understand so here we will get the delivery partner id and from the order id you will get the whole summary that is some uh, back office some uh, microservice will do that logic so whenever the delivery service will get an order id he needs to get the whole summary okay what is the the address of that end user who is ordering what is the name uh, what is the order id and what is the locations what is the delivery time and all those properties so this is our delivery service so let's uh, build our card service 
and the order service in this video and these are like our path forward building all these services after that so as we discussed i need to have a user address entity also so what i have done is i have created a user entity user address entity same as the restaurant address entity and both are in different services so we cannot use the shared table we need to have a different tables in each service okay and here what i did is i created this entity inside this user address entity it's one to many because single user can have multiple addresses so this is user entity which we already had and this is a user address entity and in the user address entity we can also have two more attributes which is lat and long latitude and longitude this is the default null we will also see what all attributes we can put uh, default null latitude and longitude okay city we need city at least and uh, city street pin code is uh, default null okay country uh, default null because if you are operating in a one country you don't need to specify country state is default null okay and this is how we are associating the relationship one to one one to many and many to one so single user will have many addresses so one to many many user address entity and then single address can be attached to a multi uh, sorry multiple addresses attached to a single user right so it should be many to one so you can see many to one it's like a primary key foreign key so user id as a foreign key will be there in the address entity so now simple thing is you cre we can create a crud operation for it so it's just a crud we won't be talking about it here we can create a there is a user this is user controller this will be address controller so once you logged in then you can just play with this user address entity so it's all about adding your own addresses right because in in uber eats you can have multiple addresses once your profile is created you can select a delivery location to that address which you have created right so here api v1 user so instead of uh, that it will be user address user addresses and inside the controller it should be user uh, because we are creating address of the user so let's do the resource naming here so let's say you wanted to create an address i will just create some of the routes and then we will move further so here what we are doing is we will be creating an address of a user right so it will be create a new address of this user id okay so it will be create user address and just take the, the required inputs and then create this address so before creating the address what we can do is we are creating the address of the logged in user so either you pass as a path param or we already have the user id with us but just for the rest uh, api standards we can just also pass it so you can create the address of your own but sometimes what happens is admin also wants to create the address of any restaurant admin or any other random user then system admin can do that but for normal users this id should be the same id which you have inside your token so create user address here we will create a details and all these things because this is a crud operation i don't want to focus much so here we will create address update address delete address list all your addresses because uh, when you want to create a new address you also want to see do i have already this address created in my list so this is the post then i can fetch all my addresses user addresses it should be get and we need to see uh, the rest api naming should not conflict with the user controller fetch all addresses
okay this will this already has the user object so we already have created this uh, user uh, TypeScript annotation user and it's of user metadata so here surveys fetch all address of this user which I am passing okay we will create this method inside a user address service so similarly user service we will have a user address service which will access the user address repository user address service So let's create this service user address service inside our services so it's like uh, we have only this folder i can create here only user address service.ts i will copy whatever we have inside user service and then i will update it so the service name is user address service i will inject the user repository that is find auth repository i don't need I can need I would need a user repository and user address repository so this is user address entity we need to import this okay yes now it is playing with me user address entity we have user address entity inside this the name should be exactly the same user address entity and inside service i'll just replace it then user address repo user address entity okay add import so we are good here now we will write whatever the methods is needed First of all, I will just clean this. And we don't need these methods. Okay. Now we will define all these methods which we need from the controller. So this is my user controller, sorry, user address uh, controller, which we have created. So here I have created this uh, user address TTO that we can use in our controllers. So this is our user address TTO, user address controller. I will just replace uh, with these DTOs which we have created. So this is body and we also need a user, currently logged in user, which is of type user metadata. Okay, and here we are creating service. So service is of type, first of all, remove everything which is not needed and here we are saying user address dto this dot service dot create so we are passing body and a user so copy this service dot create user address service let's go there user address service so here we are doing create operation so i'll first input the the payload this is what we are getting from the controller to the service and it is going to return user address entity so here create user address TTO add all missing imports save entity so what we are entity user address entity this is user address repo dot create i mean this is the repeated operations user address entity and we also need to check if uh, this user is there in the database so what happened with this user attribute maybe api user okay so we got the user id so we will just do const user equal to await this dot user repo dot find let's say find one and where clause where this id is this uh, 
API user dot id okay if user exists then we are fine that okay whoever is creating the address does exist in the database if user doesn't exist then we need to throw an exception that is ex expected okay if user is there then we will just create a save entity and this is the user we need to pass this is user address entity so this is our save entity right uh, save entity and then we will just say is user address report dot save so okay there are some variable conflicts I'll just replace this because this is like a three lines of code why i am writing too much user address entity if user exists then we will pass it so this is the body and then save entity we need to pass to this so const created address equal to address report dot save and then i will just return the created address address created successfully simple create api we don't need uh, to do this save entity okay we are passing so this is just like a create address now similarly you will do update delete and all that we can do offline so here this is a dto and this is my controller so control i need to add inside a module user controller and then i have a user address controller user address controller i already added a user address entity and then user address service this is my user module containing two entity two controllers and two services fetch all address i think we have one api which is talking about it so we have to return it so this is the create user address and then this is fetch all the addresses We will update this API description and all. Here, async, fetch all address, and I will. I'm getting user uh, as a payload. So it's simple uh, type RM operation. Nothing fancy. We say, we just write a where clause. A return await. This dot user repo. Uh, this should be user address repo. Address repo dot find where this api user dot id so but what i'm trying to find i am looking for all the address of a user right so where close uh the where close will be because we don't have the address id it's a user id so we are doing a uh, trying to do the find operation based on the user id okay uh, if i remember this correctly this should be id api user dot id happened with this i'm looking for where user equal to this because in address repo we have the user so i can do the find operation where operation on the user so going to the user address service api user okay it's a user id sorry so this will work it will give us all the addresses has been created for that particular user okay and then go to address controller just update the status code api descriptions and all because these are old and we are just copying from the user controller address create api this is address return address list api and we see some errors because what happened user address entity does not have controller decorator okay that's strange so we have added a user entity this has entity annotation user address controller 
this is controller users okay let's do the simple troubleshooting what happened is user address controller user address service and this is user controller the name should be different user address controller this is user controller okay let's see what we are inputting here user address entity that is fine and inside user module if i go both the entities are there type rm dot module and inside controller i have user address controller okay this is wrong what i'm doing user address controller and this is user address entity i need to import it from the entity small mistakes due to the missing imports and then we can just see our api docs in the api docs uh, this is a restaurant this is user so now you can actually create a address I, I mean i need to update the dto also this shows the correct response right payload but this response dto is not correct here this is the list of all the addresses this also this should be the array of all the addresses so these are small uh, type types i need to add inside uh, swagger annotations so that we can show the proper api specs for the addresses uh, user addresses user id addresses so this is will create address this will list you all the address okay let's see uh, we are done with this then we will just bootstrap our two more services on top of this okay so let's check the address apis so in address apis what we have is simple request body and these address api can be accessed once you are logged in and we don't need to really pass the user id because address who is going to update the address the user itself so if you are accessing these apis that means you are updating your own address or adding a new address so what we can do is first we will do the login so here this is our username and password i'm just using these default everywhere post login and i got the token I will authorize these APIs and then I will just uh, check the address APIs, create address, address is created and then I can also check the, the list of all the addresses created for this for my user, I mean my own addresses, you can see the array of addresses I can see. So why we need it, we need it for the delivery because once you add items to the cart and then when you place the delivery you need to select one address out of these many or you need to have one default address always there that we can associate with your delivery and your delivery partner can go to that delivery address for the delivery of uh, your food menu item okay so this is simple one and you can also play with this on your swagger on your postman or postman or any other tool i created a json out of this swagger spec i can save it oh, how can i save it Save as api.json json on the desktop and then you can use some of your tool like uh, I use insomnia so here we can add a collection let me see if I can do that in one moment so I need to do the login okay here we can create request collection or create request collection from the design document import from the file okay api.json this is workspace so this is auth service right i wasn't expecting this okay these are our apis right so this is what i was trying to do we will get all the our apis and if you want to play with the some postman tool or some your rest cli rest uh, testing tool then you can do it like this you export your json and then import it here 
and then you need to configure these environment variables right this base url uh base url post path live preview okay wait how can i configure it this is environment variable custom and value of this environment variable is environment variable is base url i never tried it but there should be a way to replace the value so let's say if i do something like this localhost 3001 api u1 health is it like uh, not okay i put the wrong port you can see this api is up and running similarly you can just either create this environment variable or just replace and try to test your apis okay this is just a short trick if you want to export this api spec you can send this api spec to someone who don't have access to the swagger okay so now we have this address table for the users also to manage the user addresses now we can work on the cart microservice okay so we can create a cart service i will what i will do is I will create a copy of the restaurant service and I will rename it and just call it as a cart service. Because it's going to be the, the same, just the entities will be different here. Package node JSON, it will be cart. API for cart service. Because the dependencies, all the things we are going to consume the same. We have a typo RM. It, it, this API also going to use Postgres as a database. Maybe we will build one service which uses the Prisma ORM because it's all for we are doing for learning. Right. So now in the card service, this is app domain authentication. We still need this auth guard. Access token strategy which is validating your token we can also create a package like we already have this typings package right in the packages i will be putting a lot of types in my typings package because recently we created enums similarly whatever the dto types we have all the dto types we can export as an interface to the types so that they can also be shared with the ui Let's talk about this API. We'll just rename it to cart. We don't need a search module here. Auth and cart. Okay, cart controller. We'll just have one controller. DTO. Okay, restaurant. DTO is fine. Then we will see. Uh, I will just think about it. What else we can have in this cart service? Maybe we'll add one more uh, table. This is restaurant service. Now rename all these things. So we can just, because once you have a baseline service, it's easy to create another service. And these are the rest based services, which can be created very easily. Cart service, cart dto.ts, cart entity.ts and cart service.ts. We will change the class names and all inside a domain module. We need to remove things which has gone now. Right, so search module we don't have. We have auth module still there. We will import it. And then instead of restaurant entity, this is going to be the cart entity. I will just change the names of the entities. We will update the attributes inside this like the columns for this so this is our cart entity and this cart entity we are going to use everywhere else inside our domain module we have a cart entity just only one table for now and type for a module why it is complaining okay so inside we have a cart entity okay this module is clear We'll have a cart controller, just one controller.
here it is going to use card service so for now i'll just uh, change this to the card entity and delete all those things which we don't have this is card entity and card repo and we will update delete all these methods which we don't need okay this is my card controller and inside cart which is just all about uh, storing your cart items so this is a, the, the route structure for this is api v1 cart same as the api v1 restaurant so these mappings we should be able to add in our proxy service this is our gateway service proxy service right here we were using this middleware okay where is that proxy cart middleware proxy auth middleware similarly like this is how the front end will consume it right and let me see how we were using it so i can adopt okay so when you are sending the path api even auth service it will take all the requests to the auth middleware i mean user service i'm saying this is another consumer we will add what it will do is it will forward your service to the card service when you the url is api v1 uh, cart similarly there is another proxy middleware we need to add api v1 restaurant service so it's internal routing we will be doing with these custom middlewares we have created here so here we will create a restaurant uh, middleware proxy restaurant and what this middleware will do is because currently these are running locally i will be uh, restaurant is running on 3001 auth is running on 3000 so cart will be running on 3002 let's say restaurant is running on 3001 so whenever the request is coming for restaurant service it will forward all the request to this url means this service so this is how this particular proxy request is working proxy middleware and we will register this reverse proxy restaurant middleware so this is just another middleware same as these all middlewares so every service will register a middleware here for a particular path pattern this is for auth service this is for card service this is for restaurant service similarly there will be another uh, middleware we will register for order service delivery service all these things this is our proxy gateway which is forwarding based on these path to the target service okay now coming back to our service which is card service so in card service we have a card controller card uh, service and card entity card controller now we can import so similarly we'll just update this to the card service go to domain module this is card controller and card service import them so our main module is also kind of ready the only thing is the internal logic we need to change okay have we, what all we have decided for these entities let's see inside our card service we are going to have the menu items which user keeps adding so there will be the user like the end user who is adding these items so the user id dish menu id restaurant id uh, the whole dish menu item json object and the number of items you are adding inside the cart okay so that we can calculate the price by multiplying the the count and the price of the menu item okay so in this uid so first of all id and then rest all are will be type of uuid uh, we don't need to specify the length for uuid so user id is must and then there is a menu id menu item id we need to use the same names when we work when we are creating the apis menu item id restaurant id and these are of type UUID because 
these are primary keys of reference tables restaurant id user id menu item id and this is uh, menu item which is going to be json b default null type we may create a menu item type custom menu item type and we'll put that value here owner id we don't need website url social link cuisines average price we may have account i mean how many uh, menu items like i i want to order two paneer tikka is available let long contact number let's remove all these things which we don't need okay so we have this uh, separate entity cart entity okay and this cart entity we will pass from everywhere so while initializing the db module we'll, we are passing cart entity so when we start this application from the nx console now i can see the cart right i can do the build first of all i need to do pnpm install because this is a new service let's see if node module has everything all the required modules and then we can start playing with this service so we'll just do npm run build npm run start dev because it's just a clone of other service i know there are some build errors but at least uh, we are able to some simply set up our application there are lots of build errors which we need to fix controller and some error restaurant service so it will be a cart service and cart service we are injecting inside a controller so now it is uh, compiler error free dtos we will change things here inside cart service we are going to change lots of things I was thinking to reuse this code by changing the entity names and all but we will do it uh, later okay somewhat like this now we will change we will do npm run build so what i will do is in the cart we don't have a complex apis it's all about add item to the cart remove item from the cart clear my cart that's it right so we are just passing user id restaurant id and the menu item json object which is a properly formatted uh, json object having all the all the details about the menu okay so let's complete that so this is all about in this video now we will finish the card service and the order service in the next video